That's Cabo Prossimo. This week, I'm going to be showing you a really powerful texture painting workflow. And this one is built right into Blender. Uchu Paint. Jodimo. Last week, we took a look at how concept artist Ian McHugh builds up layers and layers of color to create his mesmerizing 2D images. With Uchu Paint, we've got the advantage of being able to do something very similar, but in 3D. To get painting, I just select my model, click Quick Uchu Paint Node Setup, New Layer, Image, switch to Texture Paint Mode, grab a brush, get painting. That is so fast compared to the standard Blender rigmarole when it comes to texture painting. But there's much, much more we can do in Uchu Paint. We can easily make as many paint layers as we like, but what's more, Uchu Paint is a PBR tool. So each individual layer can have multiple channels within it. So you can actually paint in metalness, roughness, even normals, so that you can really create the illusion of cavities or bumps, things like cracks, grooves, and rivets, stuff like that. Uh, now, just a reminder, we are texture painting here, so your model will have to be UV unwrapped. Uchu Paint can have a go at unwrapping for you with this handy little add simple UVs button. It really works pretty well but you're probably best off doing a proper unwrap yourself. So again, I just click Quick Uchu Paint Node Setup. I'll just leave these defaults as they are. You'll notice that it will handily switch us into Material Preview Mode. So what have we got here? You can see color, metallic, and so on. I've got this little color chip. We can play with these sliders. This can act as my base layer. I'm going to try and make this like the steel that a boat hull would be made of. So I can crank up the metallic value to one. Now, mild steel is actually pretty dark and pretty rough, as you can see here in this reference image. So I'll dial in the color and the roughness. Now, I want a layer of imperfection, of variation. Layer is the operative word here. It's what Uchu Paint is all about. Click this little plus here, and that opens this big menu. I'm going to paint in the variation that I want, so I'll go for a new image, and that'll give me a new blank canvas. I get this handy box where I can give it a name, say Steel Variation. I can also set the resolution. It's got these handy presets. I'll go for 2K. I can also decide how this will be blended over my base layer here. But for now, I'll just leave it at the default mix, which is the equivalent of the normal blending mode in something like Photoshop. Now, as we saw, if I'm in texture paint mode, I can already start painting. I'm going to use this spatter brush I created just from a black and white image. I have the stroke set to anchored, so I can just click and drag and set the size and rotation. And I will hover over the base layer color chip and tap Control C just to copy that color and then hover over the brush color chip over there at the top left and paste it in there. And now I can just get painting. Right, so this is the beginning of my layer stack. I can switch it on and off here. I can change its opacity. And handy feature, to see exactly the colors I'm creating on just this layer, I can toggle this preview mode. That gets rid of all the lighting, I just see the flat color. 
Now I'm painting onto a transparent image layer here. So we see this alpha checker pattern. Underneath the layer stack, I have a bunch of drop downs where I can manipulate the selected layer in detail. First is the image we're currently painting. And we can, for example, swap that out for another image here if we want, or even replace it altogether with something procedural. Like for example, we've got noise here, or let's try Voronoi. Or I could just use a solid color. Anyway, switch back to the steel variation image. And then underneath the image settings are the vector or mapping options. Obviously, for us to be able to paint predictably, we need to use the UVs. But there are other options here for different types of layers, different use cases. And then underneath the mapping, I have the channel options. And this is where you can access some of the crazy power of Uchu Paint. By default, only the color channel will be enabled, but I've decided I also want a bit of bump to show in this layer, just to make the surface a bit uneven, perhaps slightly corroded. So I'll enable the bump channel too. This can have a pretty strong effect, so you may need to dial it right down so it's just above zero, say 0 0.01 or something. Right, back up in the color channel, let's set this to multiply over the steel base layer. So we're interacting a bit more with that base layer. I think that's now a wee bit dark and saturated. So back under the layer options, we can add in a modifier. Click on the little spanner icon. We're gonna go for hue saturation and I wanna reduce the saturation a bit. I'd also like to edit the contrast, knock it back a little bit. So again, click on that wrench, modifier, brightness contrast, and I'll just dial that contrast down a bit. Back up in the layer stack, remember we can also turn down the intensity of the layer as a whole great thing about working in Uchu Paint. It's all non-destructive. I can come back and tweak stuff as much as I like. Right, let's add some rust over this steel. I want to click the little plus for a new layer. Again, I'll go for that first option, new image. I can give it a name right away, rust. Set the resolution, 2K. Okay, just to demonstrate something, I'm gonna turn down the roughness on our base layer. Back in the rust layer, I'll just use the fill tool, make sure it's set to mix, and I'll choose a rusty brown color. Look what happens. It's inheriting its metalness and roughness from the layers beneath. That's how Uchu Paint works, unless you specify a specific channel for a layer, in this case, metalness and roughness, it'll just come through from the layers below. I don't want the rust to look metallic, of course, so I'll enable the metallic channel to give me control over the metalness in this layer. By default, Uchu Paint uses the layer color to define the influence of a channel. In this case, the layer color is that dark brown that I chose, and that's close to black. So we can't really see any metalness anyway, but I want more control. So I'll use custom value here. And now I can completely switch off metalness for this layer just by setting it to zero. I also want the rust to be rough, so I'll enable the roughness channel. And again, by default, it's using the layer color to set the roughness. And again, the darker the color, the less a channel will be visible. Instead, I'll again choose custom value and have that set to the maximum of one. Finally, I want a grainy, rusty 
texture. So I'll enable the bump channel. I'll choose custom data here and I'll select noise. Now, by default, this is going to be way too big for what I need. I want to simulate the tiny grains that rust is made from. So I'll increase the scale value to something huge, say uh, 500, which counterintuitively makes it smaller. As we've seen, the normal channel does need a light touch. So I'll turn the height down to something tiny like 0 0.01. But of course, rust forms unevenly. So now I've got the layer properties set up the way I want them. I'll again use the fill tool, but this time right click and under this blend menu, select erase alpha and just click to clear that layer. And to avoid confusion, I'll again right click and switch back to the standard mix mode. If I decide I like a color, I can add it to a palette in the tool settings. New, click the little plus, and there we are, a handy swatch that I can reuse. Now, to make the rust patchy, I'm going to switch between some more brushes that I set up, again using some grungy textures. I'll just speed this bit up. Now it's time to slap some layers of paint around over the top of these base layers. Let's say a layer of dark, tealy, bluey green has been painted over a lighter color. So very Ian McHugh like, I'll make a new layer, new image, call it paint pale. And I'll set up its metallic and roughness values. You could put some bump in here as well. You could simulate the orange peel look of real paint. And I'm gonna rapidly Bosh some color in there with some pretty sloppy brushwork. I'll do the same again for the darker paint over the top, set up a new layer, give it a name and so on. I'm going to use the brush in Erase Alpha mode to eat away a little bit at this top layer of paint to simulate some wear and tear, perhaps around edges and where the boat might have rubbed up against the harbour and whatnot. Finally, I want to simulate the sheets of steel an old tub like this would be made of. I'll add a new layer, again, new image, call it panel lines. And now I think I'll swap to a standard hard brush, but I'm going to change my stroke method. I'm going to change it to line. Under the color channel, I want the lines to appear to be dark, so I'll multiply them over the channels below. And importantly, I need to enable the bump channel to give the illusion of grooves in this surface. Now, if I set my brush really tiny, say 0.2 or something, or smaller even, then I can just click and drag to draw straight lines to simulate panels. Oh my goodness, Uchu paint, love it. 
absolutely superb and so fun to use. And the fact that it ships free with Blender really is just nuts. Do yourselves a favor, get hooked on this thing. I know I am. Well, my friends, only one thing left to say this week. Thanks for watching and do zostrichi. 3D From Zero makes tutorials and tips about 3D software. If you're into 3D or you'd like to be, check out my free course on 3dfromzero.com and there are some paid courses there too. Thanks for watching.